All right. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to our Jump Search Talent Show. Uh, I know today we're going to be talking about leveraging your hero, hero trauma to find your freedom um, with our guest speaker, Phil Na. Um, no, and, uh, you know, want to welcome him. Um, maybe first off, just as a heads up, we are going to be opening up to comments. So if you have any comments or questions that you have for Phil, feel free to drop it in the comment section. And with that, I want to go ahead and introduce Phil. Um, so a quick background, I've known Phil since high school. Uh, it was during summer, and I want to say it was probably back in 2002. So it's been a very yes. long time. I've known Phil through teenage years all the way until now in our 30s, and it's been a pleasure. Um, I, you know, it's funny because, you know, Phil, I, I, there are people that you stay in touch with and there are people you don't. And I think we have kind of the, you know, like the fortune of just being able to have our, our paths cross um, yeah. at different times and just being able to stay in touch. So um, want to get, kind of give a little background. Like I, I've known, yeah, Phil <laughs> for the last 20, 30 years. And, um, and, and I've been impressed with just how he's built his insurance practice um, and teaching people literacy um, you know, on his kind of on his personal side, like he's finding fulfill, fulfillment in his life, his personal and spiritual development. And it's impressive. I, there was one there was a post that you made about a 12 day um, silent meditation. So we want to hear more <laughs> about that. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, Phil, I know Phil is kind of somebody who is just super gung ho about a lot of things. And so he's super an avid snowboarder, triathlete, um, does CrossFit, and he's getting into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, we know Phil, uh, Phil as somebody who is super passionate about a lot of things in life, but he's also super accomplished. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, Michelle, I appreciate you uh, using the name that's more people know me as now, because when, when we met in high school, uh, uh, I go by my mother's given name, right? Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I, I love that you talk about we've known each other for, I guess, like 20 years. And, and, and that's like a major bulk of our lives because, you know, we're, we're in our later 30s now. And um, it's interesting, right? We, we, um, I know essence of Michelle, right? And Eric. And you two have grown to be different version evolutions of yourself as I am as well. And, and there's some differences and there's some, some core essence of that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I've, I've really been looking forward to getting to know you, Phil, because like you said, you know, Michelle speaks very highly of you and you know, you and I, we've, we've gone snowboarding here in, in park city a few years back, but uh, that was just <laughs> sort of a snapshot. And since yeah. our last conversation, you know, in preparation for this podcast, uh, and in getting to know you and, you know, that post that you made that uh, was really what prompted us to reach out to you, that post about the 12-day silent meditation. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, I'd love to hear this story and, you know, yeah. what would prompt somebody to do such a thing? Um, yes. So we're looking forward to getting into this. Yeah, um, okay. Yeah. So uh, I can talk a little bit about that. And and I think, um, I think uh, pain and uh, trauma or unfortunate event um, it, it's such a great opportunity for, for us to um, have the energy to, to do something that in our comfortable life we don't do. And there's, there's, whenever I'm in suffering or misery, there's just, just this voice inside of me that just say, don't waste this amazing opportunity, right? Don't, don't waste a perfect disaster. Um, every, so... Uh, what what prompted me to like leave my family for 12 days and no, no cell phone, nothing um, and no talking and not even like uh, as Michelle know me, we have similar energy because we're like animated people like we, we just kind of look at people and smile. Right. Um, <laughs> we're hardcore and, and, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in, in the in the retreat, uh, they have this thing called noble silence. So meaning no face or gesture, no body language communication, neither. Oh my just, gosh. Keep, <laughs> just keep to yourself. <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I think I, I, um, 
so during the middle part of this year, I um, I felt very lost um, again, right? And uh, and uh, I I've been lost um, in terms of life direction many times over, and and come out of it stronger and more refined every single time. So it's not my first go around. So so it's not like I'm not panicking that I'm lost, um, if that makes sense. But for for people that maybe feel that sense of uh, hopelessness, loss in the life direction the first time and they haven't come to the other side, it might be scary. Kind of like uh, we, we have young children, right? Um, my, my daughter is learning to like sleep by herself. It's scary, right? For a kid, yeah. they, don't, they don't know what's going to happen when they fall asleep, especially whenever they wake up, they're at a different place. They're not at the fun place anymore. It's scary. But as an adult, yeah, we go to sleep, we wake up, we don't think it's life or death. So, so it's kind of like that. Um, yeah. So it's not my first go around of, um, okay, I need to reposition my life. Uh, but long, long story short, um, I, uh, up, up until that point for the last three, four, five years, uh, I, I've been deep into this Tony Robbins ecosystem. Uh, it's called Platinum Partnership. Uh, we pay like $85,000 a year to, to be part of the membership. And when I first joined, it was wow. like a huge, huge stretch for me. It's like, okay, there's like goals, like half of my cash saving. I'm going to just put it in there. Uh, but the reason that motivate me to do that is like, there's just something inside of me, you know, that I, I want to be around these caliber of people uh, and, and being mentored by Tony Robbins. So when I joined um, at one of the first event, and it's an international community, right? I, um, I felt very intimidated because I like, I don't belong here, right? Because many people that join $85,000 is like buying a t-shirt for them. It's like, uh, I, don't, I don't care about that, right? <laughs> Phil, can I, can I just interrupt you for a second? $85,000, that's not Trump change, no, right? It's not. But, you, but you see this as an investment in yourself and in your, your company and your family and your personal professional life. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, for most folks, that's not that's not you know just chump change, right? I mean, no, it, it, yeah, it's not. It wasn't chump change for me uh, at that at that point for sure, and even for now, like that's not chump change neither, right? Um, but I, I I sit next to room of like so next to like a guy that I I, I met who is my partner at that event. Um, he's like on the fourth ma- magazine of like top thirty under thirty um, in uh, Hong Kong. And, and um, another gal, um, like like the, the real crazy rich Asian people, like, <laughs> I, I met them, you know, you, I'm sitting next to them. them. <laughs> and, and here I am just like worrying about, oh my gosh, like my four employees in my insurance agency, like I feel so small, right? Um, and um, like, or like there's like a 24 year old young man um, who runs a fashion um uh, closing line and he's saving like six hundred thousand dollars a year um not really thinking about saving right and and and, and he's spending a lot more and, and of course he makes a lot more so like those kind of caliber people um so so now that they're, they're my peers they they like we're we're close friends uh, but at this uh, but i don't know why this particular year I, I think it has something to do with starting february i decided that man i for the last few years, I've been focusing my time on on the wrong career path. Um, and I feel like I was still trading time for money again. And I was so disappointed in me. Um, and for some reason, I start comparing myself to those caliber of friends and peers. Um, so then I think, my gosh, my, my relationship with my wife is crap. Well, the reason it's crap, because... Um, I'm so focused on myself, right? I'm so focused on what I'm not accomplishing. I'm so focusing on comparing myself, um, a, a very unfair comparison as that. Um, I, I'm discrediting everything that I ever accomplished and I'm measuring myself just strictly based on money. Uh, and it's just make me feel really bad about myself. And, and why I'm doing that, I know I'm, that's not the right thing to do. So I'm still judging myself for judging myself harshly. So all these things just stack. And then I see my daughter who is so innocent and just looking up to me and I was like, gosh, I don't deserve her love. Um, so all these things just intertwine. And uh, I have a blessing to have amazing like life coach and business coach and very supportive friends who, who love me for me. 
and they, they know something is just not right and then they just love me and just guide me through but I, I would temporarily feel very good about it but then I would just get back into that loop again and that's just like this is not me so I need to check out yeah. to go to this silent retreat and that's how it started right Phil, can can you um, just give our audience a little bit of background of kind of where you're coming from here? I mean, you've obviously built a, a successful business. You have a wife, you have a a family, and it sounds like you've been struggling recently in terms of, you know, we'll talk about this, but, you know, these false summits, right? Mm -hmm. But can you give some folks uh, that are that are listening just some context in terms of where you came from? Yeah, right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'd love yeah, to hear that story because you shared yeah. a little bit about that with us. Yeah, we're, we're totally we Quentin Tarantino in this thing yeah. for, for the audience. Like, like, who is this guy? He's everywhere. He's in, like so disorganized. Um, okay, so Quentin Tarantino it back a little bit. Um, I'll try to do this in um, maybe three minutes, and then you can guide me yeah. to to be any specific. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, um, well. Why don't we start with um, 2011 when I decided to open my insurance agency, right? Um, really quick. I would love to hear where you came from. Oh, so okay. you talked All about... Right. So let's go, let's back go way back. Let's go way back. Let's go way back. Take it back to the okay. old school. <laughs> okay. You know how um, as high school kids, we make like, your mama is so poor jokes. <laughs> And, and we all laugh at that. And then one day, one day I remember in high school, I was like, dude, that, that's, that's not a joke. That was like the neighborhood that I grew up in. It's like, like, like okay, this is like no joking matter, but it's, it's like so, so real and so serious, but you have no choice but to laugh about it. Uh, the, the joke's like, your mom is so poor, she got married for the rice, right? You know, I, I witnessed people, like, in, 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 I grew up, in like one of the poorest neighborhood in Ho, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. And I can only think of maybe one or two other families that was poorer than us. So we were like in a very poor neighborhood and there were people that's poorer than us. Um, we're at this place that's like really close to a, a jail in the city. So whenever there's the convict would break out and then recapture again, like, like oh. they, they hide out in our neighborhood, right? So it's, it's crazy. Um, it's like Compton. As, as, yeah, I mean, truth be told, I, I don't spend a lot of time in Compton, so I only have a judgment of what Compton is about from the media, right? But I guess so. But as a kid, I don't really think about that because that was my norm. So fast forward to me hearing your mama joke is so poor, she got married for the rice. And then in college, we fundraised for like human trafficking. And I, and I was like, wow, this is like really important stuff. Not, not the your mama joke, but I think back to my childhood and, and I, I witnessed human trafficking right in front of me without knowing that's what it is. Because wow. like as, as a kid, you, 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 you hear mom telling children like, you better behave, if not, I'm gonna sell you, right? Um, and, and then we'll be playing with like some kids um, and then later we don't see them anymore. Oh, that's and, a, that's and then, reality. And, and now like, you don't really think as a kid of what happened to them. We're just like, wow, it's so cool. He got, she got to go to a different country, but we, you don't know what happened on the other side, right? Oh, wow. So, so, so that's that's that kind of poverty. Um, my family don't really wow. have like dining table. We we eat on this like raggy cement uh, home, um, like with newspaper, and we put. Um, so, <laughs> my we we don't have stove like like. I remember when my mom visit our relative and, and she saw this gas stove. So it's a gas stove that we like go camping with, right? Yeah. And she's like, wow, cooking is so cool now. It's like <laughs> playing toy because in our house to cook anything, my mom would have to like, you know, hack the, the wooden thing, use the newspaper, fire things up and like... <laughs> you take it for granted. <laughs> Every day you're camping. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I laugh about it because inside of the house, in the family, like this is just my world. Um, I don't really think that we were poor until I remember days that I realized that, oh my gosh, we're really poor. For example, we'll go to the city. Uh, and the, 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 the interesting thing about a third world country is that the, the wealth gap is like huge. 
right? So we, we, we go to like malls and places where they, they sell things in like American currency money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just look at stuff and, and something in my mind just like, like, that's not for me. That's unreachable. That's untouchable, right? Um, we'll go, uh, my dad used to um, service the boats by the river bank. And I'll see like cruise ship uh, that, that kind of you hop on, everybody dress nice. They, they go on a cruise around for the dinner thing. And in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's like, that's it, right? That's the life. Like, I don't know who these people are from, but I know I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be doing that. That's, that's not my world, right? And I keep like those things stack. And we, we read the books about like rich dad, poor dad. And I yeah. definitely have a heavy dosage of poor dad philosophy stacked through my childhood without knowing it uh you know fast forward back earlier this year um i went back to asia uh hang out with my crazy rich real crazy rich asian friends and then you know <laughs> i find myself being on the, those same cruise ship boat you know next to me where there was like you know miss japan uh and like the the guy who owned a tech company and like, like other i, I mean to me, that, that's just friends now, but like, it's just crazy to take a step back and see like their accomplishment. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I live in that. Anyhow, so going back to how poor we were, <laughs> it was, that's pretty we, poor. Were pretty, we were pretty poor. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was always so like um, scared to, um, to, to have friends at school find out where I live, you know, and, and that's shame, right? That's shame. Um, mm -hmm. this, is, this is while you were in Vietnam. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I mean, also like somewhat in the U.S. too, because like we didn't just move to the U.S. and became rich, right? We moved to the U.S. <laughs> thinking we're having better life and then realizing like, dang, we're literally poor in the U.S. too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and Michelle, like this, this is not really a competition about like who's the poorest, right? Like, like because I, I think it's just a sensation of feeling shame, the sensation of feeling guilty, uh, the, um, of, of, of feeling like how we are as who we are now is not enough. That feeling is universal. It, it doesn't matter, right? Because I, I, I get to witness this too. Because in, in that Tony Robbins realm, mm -hmm. um, people that sit in front of the room, they, they own like, like just million gazillion dollar tech companies and manufacturing businesses um and they're just starting businesses left and right like like it's just so easy right like we're yeah. talking about like the, the 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 fast part guess what they have the same feeling and the same sensation that i'm not good enough um i'm not doing enough i don't belong here and when when i first think about like when i first hear people like that say that i was like wtf what are you talking about? <laughs> However, it's, it's real feeling. And when I get to really connect with them, um, they, they, it's, it's very genuine feeling. And they're really just dri a, a lot of people that are successful um, is driven by fear and, and this feeling mm -hmm. of inadequacy. Like if we don't do more, we're worthless. If we don't do more, no one would love us and we deserve to die. And that's why it just drives us so much, you know. Phil, when you were growing up, I mean, you, you kind of um, had a sense that you were financially poor, but did you did you feel like you were uh, lacking with respect to, like in other ways, like with respect to your family? I assume, did you grow up in a, you know, with both parents? And, you know, um, I mean, to what extent was your feeling of lacking just financial or was it, or did you feel you were lacking in other ways when you were growing up? Mm. So very fortunate for me, my, my parents stay together, right? So, so I, I can't fathom. And then, you know, that's like the norm in the U.S. now. We, we have more single mom and dad. Um, mm -hmm. And the attention that I receive from my aunts and uncle um, is, is, is like, there's a lot. Now, there's like six different aunts and uncle that's always around me. So, so there's always um, social aspects to, to, to my growing up. Um, the, the, the blessing of being poor is we, we get to be so creative, uh, which helps me now, right? Uh, we, we don't have 
I, I I still remember the toys that my relative from the U.S. sent me. That was like this blue truck. That was a bag of M and M's and a and a, a box uh, where I ate the M and M like one piece at a time. And then I make toys out of all those things, you know. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like... <laughs> so so that um, it's it's awesome because like life is like so interesting. Wh whatever situation that um, and and I, I'm now very convinced that. Um, before we enter this world, we kind of choose our parents and, and where we grow up in so that we kind of have a theme of life's challenges and that we get to decide. Um, so, I mean, at least I think that's a nicer way to think about life compared to like, oh my gosh, yeah, like my parents really messed me up, right? No, I chose my parents, right? Um, <laughs> um, that's a good way of thinking it. <laughs> take, take, take the power back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, it relieves us from from the, the pressure of being parents too. Like, hey, I, I I might not be the perfect dad, but hey, daughter, you chose me. What do you want me to do? Right? This is this is how I am. This is all I can do for you up to this point. Right? I'm gonna be better. Uh, uh, but yeah, um, I, I don't feel a lacking in terms of like my mom's love for me. My my uh, my dad though, um, I know that he always loved me. Uh, he always did the best that he could. Um, but a lot of my superpower uh, came from the gifts that, that my dad have given me. Um, uh, so, so the discipline and, and I think a lot of Asian American uh, or just or anyone that has strict parents could, could kind of relate in, in some way as well. Yeah. What were some of those things that your dad sort of instilled in you growing up that kind of, you know, if he didn't do that, he'd probably be <laughs> in a different place right now. Like what were yeah. some of those things you mentioned discipline? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, th th there's so many, right? Because um, I, I don't really see myself as this person now, but in, in the past, I, I guess, it, um, like people see me as like, oh, he's very gung-ho, he's very extreme. Um, I, I don't see myself as that, right? And, and it was an unconscious behavior um, from childhood. Um, for, for example, my, my dad put a lot of effort into teaching me about academics and intellectual stuff, even before school started, way, way before school started. So that's high expectation. Because uh, like the, the thing about being poor is like you, uh, in, in, in Asia is, you know, the only way out is academic, right? The only way out. Um, the opportunity is like so little because the wealth gap is so wide, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if you want to break out of poverty, you either be like the best of the best of the best in terms of academics and then you get be, high, be higher, um, or you do something illegal, right? Um, to, 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 and, and my mom and dad is not about that life. So, um, um, thankfully, um, well, who knows, maybe I'll be different if they were any homes. So, um, <laughs> um, I remember I'll, I'll go to school and I bring back anything that's just a minor mistakes or something like that. And yeah, it's, it's not good enough. Um, even before school start, right. Um, Sometimes my dad would have like little mini lecture for the kids in the neighborhood. And because I'm around my dad, so I'm always like get one, one leg up compared to the other kids. But there was one day, um, and this is like childhood's core memory, right? Uh, there was one day where I, I didn't get something that other kids seemed to get. And I can see the disappointment in my dad's face, right? And, and like to, to me, that was everything. Um, and then there was like another day where I'm, I was so excited to go out and play. Um, so I just do whatever on my homework. And I was less than five guys, like, so we, school didn't start yet. So I just do whatever. I was, and I think I, I messed something up. So my dad looked at it and then, for, um, and I still remember just like, bam, right? I got smacked in the face, but I didn't know. I didn't know that's what just happened. Cause as a kid, you just don't know. I just remember yeah. like, wow, what is this weird sensation that just happened? And why am I crying? Um, and uh, I, I think during that moment, the, the four to five year old kid made up this rule that number one, if, if I don't give it my very best, I would die and I don't deserve love. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's and, and everything else kind of built on top of that. So me uh, either trying my best uh, me either doing something that's very different. So another rule that my dad kind of gave me is like, okay, if you're not like 
recognized as the best, you got to be different. Um, so either I got to act out and be outrageous um, or, or like be very unique or, or be the best at something. And um, then, then I would be worthless. Uh, I would not get my dad's approval. I would get that, that same feeling, right, of, of being smacked in the face, uh, et cetera. And, and as an adult, that still drove me without me knowing it, right? Um, and it's, it's bad. It's, it's, it's great. What's great about that is I always try my best. I always, like, see what's next, what's possible, what's great. Um, what's not helpful about that is, you know, the world has incredibly successful and, and gifted people. So in, in the quest of being my best, you want to surround yourself with people that have done things that you haven't done so you can learn from them, etc. So the, the paradox is I want to get better. I want to be with people that are better than me, um, but I want to be the best. I want to beat them. Um, and that is not about like self-development anymore. It's this like nonsense competition of comparison that never ends. Um, and it's not just my own experience. I see that with people that I, I look up to, um, and, and we talked about this as well. You know, th there's a way out. We talk about that, but but that that's the norm without us knowing it, right? Um, and and another thing of like being having to be unique, being special, uh, that's great because it helped me be creative, think about different way, um, think unconventionally. Uh, don't take the norm uh, for the answer, um, question everything. That's helpful. It's unhelpful in a way that sometimes I feel like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be number one at this thing. So I might as well just be a class clown, right? I might as well just act out, right? And, and you, you probably see me do that in AP chemistry, <laughs> right? Yes, I totally <laughs> right? saw that. Right? And, and I, 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 rewinding it back to a lot of class, either I... And, and it's kind of like the first few tests, I'll be like number one in the class. And then as soon as I am number one and I'm being recognized that, hey, he's a smart guy. As soon as that part of my brain get triggered, like people know that I'm smart. I stop trying and I try to be the funny guy. Right. Mm. And it's so toxic. It's so toxic. I know like, I'm that guy. <laughs> but um, I, I was never really aware of that pattern until I'm older and, and go through my personal development journey. And, and a lot of that. It's, it's all thanks to my dad. And, and when you first hear it, you might feel like, yeah, you know, Phil's dad so messed up. But no, like you, when, when you blame our parents for the bad thing that done, we, we need to also like thank them for all the superpower that came. It, it, it comes with both, you know. Um, so um, that's, that's part of the topic of this co uh, conversation <laughs> yeah. here, right? Just, just sort of harnessing those life experiences that some may just discount or dismiss as traumatic just harnessing that in a way that is you know really positive right and it sounds like you've you've really been able to do that you know i just see the i don't know the, the how do you say it? the um the the the, uh, the emotional intelligence like you're able to understand yourself phil and i really yeah. appreciate that it's, it's, it really comes through here and um <laughs> you know just your journey is amazing you know you, so you came here when and, you were, how old were you when you came to the U.S.? Yeah. And, and I, I want to note that like we, we all have amazing journey. It, it's just that sometimes we don't recognize it. Just, just like um, I didn't recognize my own amazing journey. Um, and, and we could recognize the amazingness of us and our journey. And there would be time when our brain delete that too. And it's just part of the human experience. You know, you have an amazing journey. Michelle does too. And each and every one of your listeners does too. Um, so, um, anyhow, where were we? <laughs> I mean, one of my question is how can we, you know, there's a lot of folks right now that are struggling out there. They are, you know, trying to figure out their way, uh, you know, in part from a, from a career standpoint, but also from a personal standpoint. And, you know, I guess what are some of the lessons that you've learned, um, in terms of examining your journey and appreciating where you've come from and sort of harnessing that? You know, because like sometimes when we're in yeah. a low place in our lives, in our journey, it can feel like, you know, very myopic, like the world is just falling down on us. And and For like, sure. I'm sure you've been there, you know, and yeah. how do you what do you do in those? What, what have you done in those moments? Like to sort yeah. of put things into context and to really, really reassure yourself that, you know what, 
big picture, everything's going to be okay. You know? Yeah. Um, oh, that, that, there's a lot to that, right? There, 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 there is a lot to, to that. Um, first is, um, we are probably the last person to notice our own uniqueness. Um, because uh, there's a saying that my, uh, my my close friend shares with me. It's like, if you're inside the jar, you cannot read the label, right? Um, <clears throat> and uh, for example, I remember the, um, the first time I'm aware of this uh, tool called like disk assessment, right? Yeah. And, and before that, uh, being as intense as I was and um, whatnot, I, I just have this the, uh, expectation that everybody else is like me, right? Uh, which is totally effed up. Like, that's, everybody's different. So you can imagine how bad it would be to, to work with me as a business partner or a, uh, a, um, an employee because I just expect all the high standard that, that my dad expect out of me, right? It's, it's all this chains of like, um, cause effect, cause effect. Um, so when, when I don't get a certain result, I beat myself up like, you know, so guess what? When, when, uh, my friends, uh, whom I love don't, don't get the best result that I think they are capable of. I start like beating them up, but so either I, they, they just never see me again or they stay in and become my best friends, right? Because they're used to that. But for yeah. employees, they're like, hey, I don't have to work here, right? <laughs> this, this place is crazy, right? He's charismatic. He's fun to work with. But man, he's like this every day. So like I had really low retention rate for my employees. Um, but our, our office have like uh, excellent result because of... It's like we're sprinting all the time. Uh, I'm, I was sprinting without knowing it. And when, when there's a disassessment, I was like, oh, there's like at least four types of people. And I'm like this type, right? So, so that's the first layer to, to understanding it. And then uh, I'm sure being um, in the recruiting realm, you get sucked into the rabbit hole of like personality assessments as well. Um, there's this tool that really, really helped me when I feel lost and it's so, so simple. Uh, the website is called Genius U. Um, it's made by um, Roger Hamilton, and uh, it's all free. So you have assessment, um, very simple to analyze like your value, uh, like rank them from like your highest to your lowest, um, fifteen, um, your, your strengths, um, and he analyze each part. Um, so that 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 put in context of not just um, where my strengths and weakness are but also who would be my right fit partner. Um, so if people are looking for a career jobs, um, just, I, I would say, notice like where you are in those quadrant and know who your business partner or your employer should be. So that way, long-term, you, um, you, you excel as a unit and, and that's have some chemistry uh, of, of working together. Because uh, it's it's very normal for uh, for us to just want to work with people that are like us. Um, I would imagine yeah. it would probably be a disaster if Michelle and I ever just run the company as partners together because we're so alike, um, <laughs> right? But but like Michelle it'd and be Eric, disaster. <laughs> it'll be a it'll make a really good like TV drama. Uh, but like <laughs> but just seeing your energy with Eric, I can see how you complement each other. Right. So, so that's one, another exercise that I've done that was so helpful for me was, um, it was recommended by Simon Sinek, but, um, it kind of go something like this. Um, he has a series of questionnaires and then you just call up your best friend or just people that know you through your life and just interview them and then give them the feedback. Um, and, uh, it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. You know, I, I'm going to look into that, but that, that this whole concept is so powerful, right? So often do we not ask others of their feedback, like their candid and constructive feedback of us mm -hmm. that, um, you know, there's a lot of job seekers that we work with right now. And part of our process is to, for them to do a self-reflection, but also understand, also do sort of a market assessment by interviewing folks that they've worked with in the past and understanding what their perception is of them is right and so 
it's so powerful for self-development and professional development that um, a lot of folks just miss out on that opportunity. But yeah, and, and it's know. all it's all about like market fit, right? Because e every yeah. every business has a problem. Like just just the the definition of running a business is you you sign up to solve problem all day long. Um, that there's there's our employees uh, that's like oh I'm gonna start a business because I want more free time. I was like oh, I, no you don't know what you're getting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I'm sure eventually you have the free time, but then if you want to excel that business, you gotta go back and just look for problems to solve, right? Um, every business has a problem, and those problem some can be solved with machine technology, but it's gonna be the human that that solve those things, and it's just just notice like what is the biggest problem that companies need that that I enjoy solving uh, and I would do it for free right and and that and I could potentially get paid well for that and that that would be a, a good place to start um, so uh, i I think another thing is like AI so AI can definitely i mean just within the last few weeks. I have a few like coaching session with AI helping me clarify and, and understanding myself mm -hmm. even more. So I'm literally just having a conversation, right? And then there's specific questions to ask and whatnot. Um, that's, you can do that too. Yeah, uh, curious. What, how do you prompt AI? Like what, are the, what is the question that you ask to prompt <laughs> AI to coach you? Um, so you go to ChatGPT and then just ask a question? Yeah, um, like I literally just have ChatGPT talk and just I just talk to it back. Uh, but the, the framework is very simple. Uh, I call it scope. So S is um, uh, setting expertise. So you, you ask Chat like, okay, ChatGPT, please act as a business consultant and a life coach with at least twenty years of experience, right? So that's that's number one, right? Um, C clarify outcome, right? I, I like for you to guide me to reach absolute clarity, clarity that I don't even know, clarity that even my best friends don't even know, you're going to help me with that. So, so now that we set the outcome expectation, what's going to do for me? And then, oh, offer context, right? Uh, I'd like for you to just ask me questions, um, analyze my answer, and then give me feedback, uh, etc. right? Um, P, um, this is where you probe, you pivot. So you, you go through a series of that and you just elaborate more. And then E is for evaluate. Sometimes AI lie to you, just like we lie to each other and ourselves all the time. It would just, mm -hmm. um, like people get outraged when they say, man, I can't believe like machine just make up an answer. It's just telling me what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do that to each other and to ourselves all the time, right? <laughs> right? Like we're we're literally doing that for your listeners right now. I, I don't know what your listeners want to hear right now, but I'm trying to be myself, but also have this conversation that I think would be helpful for them, right? Uh, the difference is if I ask ChatGPT, like, hey, how much of the, like how confident are you? in this answer from a scale of one to 10, it would be pretty honest with me on that. Like, or if I ask, are you lying to me? Are you just making this up? It would tell me like, yeah, I just made it up. Like, it'll say that. But, but if someone told me like, Phil, how much of this is just made up? I was like, uh, I, I don't know. But like, I might save face, right? I, I wanna be perceived as the honest guy. Like, I didn't make it up. This is absolutely true, right? So, so scope, scope, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. You know, you're right. Like there's a lot of folks that lie to themselves. I mean, we're all guilty of this to some extent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to the, to the extent that you can find friends and people in your life that will tell, will, won't, will tell you straight up what you need to hear. <laughs> I think that's, there's a lot of benefit to that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, um, honestly, I think there's, there's, I think people around us give us this feedback all the time sometimes our brain delete it because we're not mm. ready to hear it. Like for example, mm -hmm. my, my life companion, my wife, give me valuable feedback all the freaking time. However, that's so painful, right? So why did I choose? Why did I choose my wife? Because uh, well, she's probably most related to my parent, right? So there's certain thing or whatnot. Um, so 
Uh, but as I learn to love myself more, accept myself more, I see more of like the feedback that she's trying to, so that they, they more become more information and feedback versus criticism or like stab mm. in the heart, right? Uh, so it's just, yeah. there's layers to this. Um, and you know that, yeah. she, you know, her feedback is coming from a good place, even though it may hurt. You know that you trust that her <laughs> feedback is coming from a good place in the sense that, you know, she's trying to help <laughs> help you see your blind sides, right? For sure. Um, well, more, more on that because to, to be very absolutely honest, right? Um, a lot of time when we give our spouse feedback, me included, like to her, if you look really deep, 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 deep inside, yeah, it's definitely everything come from a, a place, a good place, bad place, uh, us as human define it. But sometimes it, it's so um, against my values and my rule that something got triggered and then like it come off as like being angry and, and things like that. But we're, we're, we're getting tangent here. I want to focus on <laughs> just the career seeking for, yeah. for, your, for your job seeker. Um, and uh, but- yeah. But Phil, I see, I see a theme of you take things that are, are hard, trauma, rough feedback, honest feedback, but you reframe it in a way that is positive. It, it becomes your superpower. It becomes a gift for somebody to give you feedback. And so I think it, it feels like for career seekers or, you know, people who are in their careers, you know, you either you can reject it as, hey, this is just not, you know, that person's invalid. They don't know what they're talking about. You can completely reject it or you can accept it and say, hey, this person is giving me valuable feedback. I need to reframe yes. how I think of it. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, beautiful reframe, Michelle. And um, and it's not about being positive, right? It, it's, it's not about being positive. Uh, I, I People compliment me like, oh, you're so positive. Thank you. I'm also very negative. And I also try to be realistic as well. So, so that way... Um, that, that's this um, folktale story in, in, in India. Um, it's like that, that's three, uh, a mother with three sons. Um, the first, uh, asked the first son to go to the store to buy some oil. He came back, he broke the glass and he picked it up like, oh my gosh, mom, I, I spilled half of the oil, right? Uh, the second son did the same thing, dropped the glass like, oh mom, look, I saved half of the oil, right? So the first one was the pessimist. The, the th- uh, second one is the optimist. And the third one's like, mom, uh, I dropped it. So I spilled half. There's still half left. And I'm going to go to work tomorrow to earn the money to make back the, 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 the half that I spill. So the, the third one is a practical realist, right? And, and I, I do my best to, to, to be more of, of the third because it's not just about being positive all the time. Um, mm-hmm. It's not just about being negative. It's like, okay. So as a job seeker, if, if things don't go our way, take it as information um, and get more data, um, right? And, 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 and see, um, data helps. Yeah, I love that story. I mean, I think, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, I, I want to shift gears a little bit because you did, uh, I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about the, the fall summit that you climbed. You had <laughs> yeah. mentioned, you gave us an example yes. and, and, and that's, that's a huge part of life. So I want, oh I, want, I want you to share that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how that relates to life. Yeah. And, and, um, and I, I think we're heading to this time where this, this version of AI is going to be a big disruption to all businesses and which mean disruption to jobs um but when it's all done i I think all technology end up creating more job um so it's going to be better it's just that we're going through this time of uncertainty for everybody not just job seeker but business owners and all that stuff as well um so i was at this personal development um thing it's pretty crazy um it's for guys only so 72 guys from all backgrounds. So there were doctors, there was construction workers. We're, we're at this barn together and we're, we're supposed to like complete a series of projects. And um, well, one of the things that they would do is like, okay, decide who's the leader of your group is. And now of course, like a bunch of guys, like, like there's problem with that and there's learning through that, right? Uh, so, so it's just the context of the meeting. So, um, and then w- one of those uh, day, they have an activity for us. They, d- they don't tell us what we're doing. They can just like, hey, go here. And we don't question, right? So they have us just like climb this, this mountain, like, like real, real rock climbing. 
Um, and the point is, uh, of course, we get harnessed and strapped in so then we, we don't die. So like everybody lived after the event. Okay, so 72 <laughs> came, 72 left or mm -hmm. alive. Um, the, the point is just to do your best and observe how you are feeling um, as you're climbing the activity. Because, for example, someone that's just typically pissed off all the time, they're probably going to be really pissed off. Like, how dare them, like, make me do this, um, right? Like, I, I pay to learn, like, like, I'm not. Or someone that's always, like, feeling bad about their physical ab ability is going to feel that as they're climbing. Someone that's, like, adventurous, like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to do this, right? <laughs> um, so how did I feel, right? So as I climb up and I see other people not making it up on top, even before the climb, I, I was observing myself I was like, Dude, I'm going to freaking crush this. Like, I'm going to be the first one to, to, to like, <laughs> go back to the childhood stuff that I shared with you. So, so like, like falling down and giving up is like not an effing option, right? I'm going to, you know, right? Like, uh, I'm going to show my, I, I have to do this like for myself. So of course, you know, I, I, I struggle, I climb through and, and I have a little bit of rock climbing experience, but, but it's all indoor. Uh, so I, I claw my way through. And then there, there was like some bushes on the way of the mountains. Like, I was like, how did it make this like so freaking difficult? And so I, I made it up. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then I hear the guy, right? Uh, the, 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 the guy that was like, hey, you, you got to the wrong place. And I look, oh, shoot. Like, I, I, I climb up to the top, but the wrong top, right? <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> so, so. I took a breather. It's like, you know what? I might, I'm up here, up here already. I might as well just enjoy the scene. And, and at that moment, I remember uh, I have choice to make. I was like, hey, if I just quit now, I, I still prove to myself that I did it, right? Everybody that's down there cheering, clapping on me, they know I'm the man, right? Um, so that kind of satisfied my childhood, you know, ding, ding, ding. Like, hey, as long as people respect me, I'm good. I can just chill, relax by now because I got what I thought people want, right? It's not about mm -hmm. me getting what I want. Um, that would be enough. Uh, I took a pause. I'm like, you know, what, what else is there for me to learn here? Uh, and, and I looked down, I was like, man, it's really tough to climb down and then gotta go around. Uh, but uh, so I enjoyed the view a little bit and then I went down, I climbed down. I almost fell a few times and it was a lot tougher to go down. Um, and then I climbed back up. And to me, the choice of doing that was everything. Um, it, it, was, um, it was freedom for me because I, I chose to do it, right? Um, th that was, to me, that was growth. Uh, to me, that, 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 was, that, that was courage uh, for me. Um, that, that was something that normally up to that point in my life, I would not have done that, but something just allowed me. And I remember those moments. And I think in our career life um, and in and, and anything that uh, sometimes we, there, there's a part of our, an, an arc of our life when we really want something. Um, let's say I started my insurance agency at age 26. At that point in my life, I really wanted this illusion of financial freedom. I really, really wanted that. As a 26 years old, I worked really hard. I got that. And then when I got there, I was like, okay, that was great. But is that what I want now? Um, right? Is there more um, that, that feels more right for me? Um, like, do I need to shift? Do I need to pivot? Um, so, um, so it's just part of life's journey. Sometimes we're at a peak and it's, enjoy it. And uh, there might be calling for us to reach another peak. And, and it's not just about a higher peak, a lower peak. It's just what is the rightful place um, that that lands right for us now, right? So, yeah, I feel like you know that is so relatable to life because you could have easily just been some at the first peak, it was the wrong one, and just been like, hey, I'm happy where I'm at, I'm just going to stay here. And I think a lot of people get complacent in their career, in life, and that's yeah. what they do. They they summit and they climb the wrong peak, but they're not happy, and they'll continue staying at that same peak. But I think what you did, what was so powerful was you made that decision to go to the right peak. And you're like, okay, it's 
harder to climb down and it's hard. Like it's hard yeah. work, it's painful, but I think it's just, people don't make that decision to go through the pain to get to the right peak. And it feels like you did that with your life. Like you did that with your career, with your life, trying to find fulfillment and purpose um, to climb through the hard and painful parts to get to the right peak. So I think it's a powerful story. I, I liked it. Um, yeah. It's it's impressive, you know? Yeah. It, most people don't go through that. And um, and, and thank you for that. You, you know, that, that's something that I, I struggle with as well, just like anybody, because it's, it's a difficult choice to, to make. Um, that, that's, that's comfort being here. It's, it's the known. Um, I, I know this job. I know this career, this profession. I worked my whole life for it. And over there, you, you feel like, Man, I don't know anything about that field. I, I, I don't know the unknown. I might fail, right? And, and I'm, I'm giving up something that a lot of people fight for. Um, maybe I should be more grateful. Um, and not to make staying where you are wrong, because there are definitely time in our life where we need to just commit to one path and keep going, right? And, and it's really a, a very personal choice. Um, for for everybody to explore, and I, I truly believe that uh, we we need to just spend some time by ourselves to really check in and then find out like what's right for us uh, and our situation right now, and just take the next step forward. Uh, yeah, uh, and another thing is um, sometimes there's the, this like over pressure about like gosh I have to find my purpose, I have to find my passion to, to do this. And, and I, I fall into that trap too, you know, and that's got me uh, into this like funk uh, earlier this year. Um, and, and I think those, those funk that we get in, they, they, they become more intense as we progress in life. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna be the last funk that I ever get into because like as we learn to s solve life challenges internally, uh, life just gives us more opportunity to grow um, and we don't grow unless we solve something or, or a achieve something that we haven't been able to do. And that's, that's the scary part. Right. But I got into that funk because I, I was so focused um, to like, oh, my gosh, whatever the next step is, it has to be something that I'm so passionate about, it has to be purposeful, it has to make more money. It has to give me more freedom. Of life. So like all that fear is just keep me away from making the next step. And as I'm just observing the world, just moving on by, right? There's so much weight on the shoulder for that. And, and really the answer is just so simple. It's like, what do people around me need help with the most, right? For, for job seeker, it might just be like, what problems are companies facing the most and how can I help, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and from there, we, we position ourselves well uh, to be with the right fit um, career. Yeah. Phil, you are wise beyond your years, and I'm looking forward to spending more time with you and, and getting to know you much better. It feels like there's just so much that you've learned on your journey that I can learn, that Michelle can learn from you. And, um, <laughs> you. you know, I'm, I'm yeah, I really, I really do. I really do want to spend more time with you. Um, we do need to button this up a little bit, though. Um, so in, in, in sort of closing here, um, any any other parting advice you'd offer to professionals and job seekers out there? Uh, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about sort of the WhatsApp community that you're you're building. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think um, something that really helped me um, personally is um, that there's a lot of great advice from really well-meaning people uh, out there with with genuine. Um, interest to help um, and and it, it could be very bad if we we take on the, the advice that's not suitable for us now so um, in in the midst of uncertainty for job seekers just just um, take a moment to check in to see um, your, your strengths your your weakness your your situation your responsibilities now and just be real realistic with that um and and we can only take our next step from where we are not from where we want to be right um and um yeah and, and in that whole line too i have a small 
uh, WhatsApp community. Uh, we focus on just using AI. And honestly, I'm using AI as an excuse to, to get people together. Um, but really, what, what this really is about is just um, improving our life um, altogether, uh, in, in increasing our personal impact uh, to ourselves and people around us. Um, again, using AI as a, uh, an excuse, but it's, it's also about the human insight and the, the collective community helping each other as well. How can uh, members in our audience connect with you and learn more about this uh, community that you've launched? Um, you can visit uh, AIAIMastermind.com and um, we have a um, webinar call every other week. So we just have um, another one um, we just have one yesterday, so we'll have one, you know, two weeks from now and, um, just fill out your info. Um, I don't have time to write you a bunch of email and spam your email box. Don't worry. Um, yeah. So then after that, you, you get the link to our WhatsApp group and uh, so on. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Michelle, any other questions you want to? No, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I hope it was fun for your listener as much as it's been for me. Um, and uh, again, I, I hope you guys do one podcast of your own journey too, because I really look up and admire what what you have each done and just accomplished together as a couple. My wife and I, we run businesses uh, together as well. Um, our, our synergy is not yet as graceful as yours appear to be. I don't know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, 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 appears. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure from the outside looking in, it, it, it appear like we're like uh, a unit as well. But you know, we, we we're in the need, jar. Yeah, <laughs> we, we definitely we need can't our see the label. Own, yeah, we definitely need our own retreat just to. Talk we need. About that. Yeah, we need to get together and trade war stories. And, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Phil, thank you so much. Um, this has been such a pleasure. We're, we're, you know, as you know, we're building out this podcast and we're building out our own community and we'd love to invite you back on this uh, podcast again in the future, because yeah. I think it feels like we're just scratching the surface, you know, <laughs> like you have such a, a, a deep and complex journey. And I think there's so much that we and, you know, the rest of our audience can learn from you. And I feel like we just, we've just scratched the surface literally. Yeah. So um, we'll have to invite you back uh, soon and um anyway thank you all for listening and uh thank you for, uh, phil for being here and um uh we'll we'll talk to you all soon <laughs>